Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Made in Africa, the place to discover surprising innovation for a fair and sustainable future. Thanks for finding the time and sorry for this slight delay. Um, we invited and engaged for you brilliant speaker and we have amazing video surprise. So sit back, sit back, relax and enjoy. I am Francesco Rubino and I'll be your host for the next hour. Uh, in order to give you some context, let me explain first what the heck is Startup Africa Road Trip. Startup Africa Road Trip is a not-for-profit project born in 2017 to discover and support technological innovation and early stage startup in developing countries. Startup Africa Road Trip is powered by B Entrepreneurs, an Italian association with the main purpose to support, develop and disseminate new forms of innovative entrepreneurship with a high potential of social impact. Our vision as B Entrepreneurs is to build the leading hybrid concept between cooperation and innovation, providing critical entrepreneurial skills and connection to ignite innovation across emerging countries, capitalizing on people talents, fostering disruptive capacity to solve real problems in an economically efficient and profitable way. If you bear with me and with us a couple of minutes, I will try to explain how, how we're gonna reach this amazing goal. First of all, let me present you the amazing pool of talents. The talents and the people we are leveraging in order to bring this project uh, forward. The first shout out goes to these people you can see in this in this slide. These are all professional, all working in the companies that you see on the right side of this slide. And we thank you for your time and for the resources that you devoted to Startup Africa and to this experience. In order to give you some context, as I said before, Startup Africa Road Trip was born in 2017 as a pilot project in Uganda. From the courage and the willingness of just three persons, the year after, uh, we came back in Africa, in Kenya uh, to be precise, and we performed a training and boot camp in order to transfer the knowledge that we um, acquired during our um, business life. In 2017, we kicked off the official start of uh, Startup Africa Road Trip. We um, transferred knowledge to more than 22 startups and we formed more uh, than 30 entrepreneurs. In 2020, we started new projects such as the podcast that we will have time and uh, uh, opportunity to learn more during this event, but also one online academy and the, rep the video documentary or reportage that you will see today. In 2021, so the goal for this year would be next generation Africa. We are scouting companies, innovative companies in Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, and Tanzania in order to accelerate their growth and to connect these innovators with the European ecosystem. And in 2022, so next year, our goal is to bring the winning startup to a roadshow in Italy in order to connect these dots. As I said before, 
In 2021, our team will be engaged in East Africa in order to scout for business ideas, training, and activate the local connection with the Italian ecosystem. The objective of the initiative is to support startuppers, innovators, makers, and young talents who intend to develop products or services. We want to connect the excellence in the Italian economy with the new African business initiatives, facilitating relationship in a cooperative and open innovation perspective by building bridges between two ecosystems, very, clo very close and very similar, but still struggling to approach and interact in a win-win business perspective. So what's our target? What are we aiming for? Our, the goal of Startup Africa is to train and learn also from innovative companies based in East Africa. According to our latest information, the average age of these innovators is 25 years. We promote gender equality among our bootcamp and in everything that we do. In the last uh, in 2019, our last edition, we received more than 300 applications and we accelerated 20 of them. The social and sustainability focus is also our main compass. And we tend to prioritize those companies who has a high potential impact. Just to give you also a dimension of the sector that we are aiming to support and sustain our healthcare, agribusiness, education, ECT and fintech, and sustainable energy and mobility. There is plenty of companies who are running innovative ideas in one of these domains. As I said before, we received in 2019 more than 300 applications and we aim to target the same number of applications for this year edition. Just to give you an idea or how our roadmap is, we will start in few months the open call uh, for application. We will open up application for startup based in the countries that we identified earlier. We are going to list the selected startup with minimum requirement. And then we are going to assess those startup, trying to identify, trying to identify those startup that we could support with our knowledge and with our network. Subsequently, we are going to perform and execute a bootcamp in two countries this year, two countries this year, Uganda, to be precise, Kampala, where we'll be hosted from Makerere University, one of the biggest university in, uh, in Africa, and in Rwanda as well. We aim to accelerate the growth of 20 startups, culminated by one demo day. During this demo day, an independent jury will award five startups, and those startups will benefit from a mentorship program that will accompany activities from July to February 2022. In this phase, we would like also to involve the sponsor and we would like to collaborate with the industrial ecosystem in Italy in order to create synergies and um, establish long-lasting relationships. 
we aim to perform more than 50 hours of mentorship, technical and business with the awarded startup. And subsequently, we would love and we will bring those innovators to Italy. As I said, this would be the climax, the climax, the last part of our journey. We, we are planning to perform a 10 days roadshow in four cities. Of course, if the health situation will allow us to do so, we are aiming to bring those innovators to Milan, Torino, Bologna, and Roma. We aim to present them to more than 50 realities involving, involved, including institution, innovators, and corporations with two main closing events aiming to um, achieve more than 200 participants. So that's basically what we do, what we have done so far, what is our mission, and what is our vision for the future. As I said, we are focusing our efforts to East Africa for this year, but we aim to broaden and to extend the benefit of this program also to other developing countries. I hope that I gave you some context about what we do and what we will do in the next years. Um, but enough of me talking. As I said at the beginning, we have amazing guests and fantastic uh, startup and innovators that will bring their own perspective and their own angles about Africa. But we will start our journey from Milano, introducing Roberta Cocco, Deputy Mayor for Digital Transformation of Milan. In order to present proper, properly Roberta, I have to read what you have done in your career, because you have done many things. Roberta, since 2016, you're Deputy Mayor of Digital Transformation of the Municipality of Milan. Previously, a long career at Microsoft in various roles, uh, up to being Central Marketing Director since 2004 with the Future Al Feminile. You have been uh, dealing with projects to bridge the gender gap through ICT in close collaboration with international public and private organizations. Welcome, Roberta. How are you today? I'm very well, and I'm very proud to be with you tonight. Uh, it's, uh, this is an amazing project, uh, and uh, I'm so happy that you decided to, to take uh, this event uh, within uh, the Milano uh, Digital Week, because I think that the sense is exactly this one, how to connect uh, different people, how to create uh, positive collaboration. You know, the claim of uh, this year um, Digital Week is fair and sustainable. And I think that these two keywords uh, might be easily applied uh, to your work. I am really, really honored to be able to, to stay with you tonight because I am uh, uh, following uh, your steps to steps every year. Last year, we were ready to host uh, some uh, you know, entrepreneurs uh, from Africa. Unfortunately, the COVID prevented us to, to have them here in person, but we connected digitally. And so I think that digital collaboration is a lever for these kind of projects and that we have to keep on this way. And uh, my, my role now, uh, after 25 years in the ICT sector, my role now from a municipality of Milan is to be totally available and open to support these kind of projects. And I am I, let me thank all the companies, uh, private and public companies that are supporting you because we have to be fair and sustainable. So we have to offer 
our expertise to other uh, people and uh, you know um, uh, countries and cities the same we are getting a lot from international cities one of my key projects is called uh, digital bridges and it's exactly how we can learn from other cities, other international cities that are advanced in technology more than we are. And so the, my, my key point is collaboration and digital are two assets that should uh, uh, bring us uh, in, in a better world. So I don't want to waste your time. I uh, want to leave you the stage, so good luck for this project. Please consider Municipality of Milan at your disposal for any, any um, thing or any project you might have to suggest us. Thank you very much for the work you are doing. Roberta, thank you very much. Can I ask you something sure. before you go, if you have uh, two more minutes? Yes, sure. We, we also want to thank you because Milano Digital Week is a great stage for all innovators and change makers in Italy who wants to do something different, who have a different perspective, a different angle. Uh, so I hope that uh, Milano Digital Week will be an, a recurring event every year, uh, a recurring platform to present also these kind of ideas. Yeah, you're right. And uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, last year, when we had to shift uh, the, the program of Digital Week into a full digital one, we were very sad because uh, we had prepared so many things. And this year, when we launched the, the new edition of uh, uh, Milan Digital Week, uh, we were a little bit scared because we, we didn't know if uh, this is the right time to launch this kind of event. You know what? We collected more than 600 events. And this is something, I mean, this, uh, uh, this is, a, is a kind of message for us that the digital, first of all, um, digital gets over the borders. And so this year we have projects from uh, Italy, but let me tell you from all over the world, we have a lot of uh, uh, international projects. And at the same time, we are learning a lot because with this uh, sharing of practices, uh, we are learning from more advanced uh, areas or um, organization or other city. Let me just add a, a last things. Uh, I'm also very proud of your project because uh, there is a specific focus on women empowerment. And as you said, uh, reading my by, um, bio, uh, you know, I, I'm, I have been working on gender divide for so many years, especially in tech sector, but I really think that this is an issue. So we have to, you know, be very united in facing this issue because we have to reach gender parity at all levels in all segments. So uh, congratulations also for this focus that you choose. Thanks a lot, Roberta. Uh, I'm sure you have to jump on another meeting, but thanks for your mindful thoughts. Uh, thanks also for bringing up the sponsor um, that I would love to mention also here. Cisco, Primo Milio, SGR, TNP, TCFCT, uh, DPixel and Galanti Associati. Um, among them, we also have a group of friends and family and fools who supported us economically and uh, with their time and resources. Thanks again, Roberta. Thanks for your time. And as uh, Roberta said, this is also a learning experience. This has been for me and for all the volunteers who participated in the last road trip, an amazing learning experience. Um, because we, when you travel, it's the fastest way to learn, right? And we presented ourselves as um, innovators as a change maker and during the interaction with local innovators we learned a lot along the way without further ado uh, i would love now to introduce the next speaker of today which unfortunately uh, can't uh, be live 
uh, couldn't make it to be online online right now, but he recorded for us a message. And this person is Massimiliano Mazzanti, uh, with the Italian ambassador, of course, in Uganda, uh, with more than 30 years, 20 years of experience at the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. From the 21st of October in 2019, he became ambassador of Italy in Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. He left, he has been uh, together with the Italian embassy, one of the main supporter of our project since the beginning, since the inception. So let's listen what he has to say.
Thanks to you, Massimiliano. We are eager to come back to Kampala and to come back to uh, learn and uh, understand and try to, um, yeah, try to learn from local innovators. As the ambassador was saying, I have to thank you also the ambassador because he was doing my job. He was presenting the startup and I'm really happy about it. He, was, he also gave us a perspective firsthand about what's happening in Kampala right now. Also regarding the African continent, that there is the new frontier. Um, and he also talked about Lorenzo and Andrea who are uh, two of our co-founders and you will meet them in a few minutes when we will stream the video reportage that Pedro, Giulio Pedretti prepared for us. I will take this chance to bring him on stage. Pedro, ciao. Ciao. Hi, you? Hi everyone. Fine Giulio, chance. Giulio Pedretti, let me introduce you first, Giulio. Giulio, Pre Giulio Pedretti, also known as Pedro, graduated in history of cinema, a videographer specialized in production of documentaries, commercial for TV, uh, web and social networks, creator and designer of cultural initiatives, collaborated with film festival, uh, theater companies, um, many other things, uh, Giulio. Uh, what else can you tell us um, about yourself and about the video reportage that you uh, conceived? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Francesco, <coughs> for the presentation. Hi, everyone. I'm Giulio, Giulio Pedretti, video maker based in Turin, Italy, and the director of the Startup Africa Trip uh, Reportage. Uh, I'm, I'm sincere. Before this experience, I didn't know anything about uh, Uganda, and I didn't know really much about the world of innovation and startup, particularly in Africa. So the approach, my approach was like the researcher one, discovering this new world through the production of the, of the documentary. The goal as director was to revive for the audience my surprise for a world full of ideas, energy, and desire to do something new. For that reason, we choose to realize a brief reportage in order to, to involve an audience larger than, than possible. The storytelling follows two different lines. Uh, first of, of all, uh, we wanted to describe the bootcamp phases, so from the organization to the final event. But also we wanted to present the world of innovation in Uganda through the stories of the young protagonists. So the reportage, the reportage is like a mosaic of faces and stories because the ideas, the ideas are made by the men and women that work every day of, on it. It is a self-produced uh, short documentary and uh, is designed for online distribution and uh, also to be a tool to support the project presentation so that thanks to the images and direct stories, the audience can get to know a different Africa. Because, uh, the place that that we we find we found was really really different and really more complex compared to what official media media usually present in our country so to conclude i would like to underline in particular two aspects that really impressed me in this experience the crucial role of women in Ugandan startup ecosystem. This is this was really really a big surprise, and also the hope that guides these guys to build a better world. Mm -hmm. This hope that we, we Westerns, have partly lost, especially in this period. Instead, these young African entrepreneurs continue to have it, despite to economic, political, and social difficulties. So, among all, all uh, other things, we maybe have to learn from them about it. So, I would like, uh, I hope really that you like uh, my, my work, that we develop 
with all the the Africa um, uh, startup Africa road trip uh, team, and uh, and so have a good vision and uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks a lot, Julio. Thanks also for bringing again the role of women in the social life and also in business. They are becoming more and more important also in business. And as Pedro said, this kind of documentary, you can't find it on Netflix. You can't find it on any other platform because it's our perspective, a perspective from a Western born human who goes in Africa to discover and learn from scratch. Okay, without further uh, ado, I will ask Luca to stream the video, but just let me say that we have more than 100 people connected on Webex and many others probably on Facebook. Sit back, relax and enjoy.
I hope you can see my screen. Um, I hope you can see my screen and I hope you have enjoyed uh, the video as much as we did. Uh, watching this uh, frame was for me a touching moment sometimes, a lot of memories, a lot of uh, good memories and great uh, learnings. Now let's jump right in in the next uh, session. We're going to have a, a panel session, a panel discussion uh, presented by um, Gianluca Dettori, also known as DigiLutz. Uh, Gianluca started the, uh, his career with internet in 1994 with startups and technology of venture capital. He, he is the founder and president of Primo Milius GR. Uh, an asset management company authorized by the Bank of Italy. Uh, previously, he founded the Pixel and many other things. Gianluca, um, I, I don't think I have the time you, to, to present all the things that you've you done. Stop also, <laughs> yeah, that's great. So <laughs> thank you very much for for being here. It's a beautiful privilege and a great honor to be associated to this project and I have to thank uh, Andrea and all of his friends and team that have built this. Uh, we are really proud of uh, the activity that you guys are doing and we would like you to support more and more. So the panel about today is about tonight, it's about building networks to boost innovation. So I would like to invite on the, on the panel right here on the stage, uh, Donald DeWitt. Uh, business uh, development manager in IMEA of Cisco System, which I would like to say has been our first friend and sponsor from the very beginning. Uh, the Cisco, Cisco is not only a great technology company, but is a beautiful company to work uh, within, uh, within because uh, in Cisco, uh, all em employees have the opportunity to use the company resources to pursue also non-profit uh, uh, objectives. And so I know many Cisco friends doing all kinds of different jobs and uh, thank you Donald for being here. Francesco Oliva. Hello. Francesca Oliva, technical advisor of Advocacy Foundation. Francesca. Great friend uh, of a startup. Hello. Uh, hello. Startup Africa. Lawrence Shine, Ziu Soka. I hope I said, uh, I said re right your name, co-founder advisor of the Gorilla Conservation Coffee, one of the startups mm -hmm. that we had the privilege to meet in the in the past, and uh, Alessandro Masciadri of Fondazione Carico, Program Officer. So, uh, starting about the panel session, um, I have a first round of, uh, of questions for you guys that I just wanted to, you guys, each one of you, to kind of like share, let's say, your point of view and how you grieve your own contribution to the to building these bridges, to building those networks, so that we can develop innov innovation and development in Africa. So I will start, uh, Francesca, please, uh, if you want to start uh, to tell uh, about your experience in this area. Yes, thank you, Gianluca, and thanks everybody, especially the organizers for this fantastic initiative, uh, which we are part of, by the way, and we are happy to support. So I'm called Francesco Riva, just a couple of words about my organization. I work for AVSI Foundation, which is uh, one of the oldest NGOs in Italy. We work in over 30 countries with uh, uh, over 200 projects uh, and uh, we reach 5 million people. I have the, I've had the privilege also to, to do a lot of work in my years. So I, I lived in, actually in Uganda, where you saw most of the images coming from for seven years and been in touch with a lot of uh, innovators and potential innovators. How do we uh, contribute to innovation? Well, we work uh, uh, in very extreme situations, uh, sometimes uh, dangerous situations, and in those situations, we usually have to bring the services and, uh, uh, and some time life-changing of life-saving products. And therefore, uh, with the absence of infrastructures and the absence of uh, other services, we, um, basically, we have to innovate almost daily to be able to, uh, to bring what uh, people need. Um, so we, and for doing this, we work with a number of uh, uh, stakeholders and uh, um, other innovators and, uh, and partners. Uh, for instance, we transfer technologies and innovations from uh, the north to the south. An example is when last year with Polytechnic of Milan, uh, 
uh, we introduced the production of face masks for COVID in uh, Uganda, in the Middle East, working with uh, uh, some of the tailors that we trained in our trainings. Uh, uh, but then we also uh, spread innovations that are born uh, in Africa, most of them are, like uh, ways of savings and uh, lending money in groups that we have spread in many different uh, countries and in rural areas. And these groups are the, the, basically the only way people can access uh, small loans and then can do uh, their savings. Uh, but we also promote new innovations starting from people. So, for example, in uh, uh, through co-design methodologies and working with the community, um, uh, we identify ways to solve uh, social problems. Uh, one example is uh, in an island in Uganda, where with the uh, farmers, with fish farmers uh, and fishermen, uh, we uh, work together with them to identify business models could, who could uh, improve their lives and have a social impact in the island. And uh, four years ago, we started a, a company, a startup that uh, was co-owned by the community uh, with the aim of employing local people and also provide um, income and make profit on the island. So I'll just conclude with this example to also leave to others space to talk. Luca, your microphone is off. I'm sorry. Thank you, Francesca. We really appreciate uh, the, par the partnership with us. Yeah, we would like to be contaminated by your knowledge of Africa and how to operate in these uh, complicated uh, uh, countries, difficult, where there are so many difficult practical things. And we would like to contaminate all the non-profit uh, and incredible activity that you guys do to empower it with uh, the know-how that has been built in uh, startups. And uh, from this point of view, I would like to uh, introduce in the panel Alessandro Masciadri from uh, Fondazione Caripolo. Also, because there is something boiling, then I don't know how much you can tell, but there is something boiling about this uh, particular activity. What, what can you tell us about impacting through innovation in Africa? Thank you, Gianluca, and thank you, everybody, for being here, and also thank you to Startup Africa Road Trip for inviting me here. So, uh, very quickly, first few words from the organization I work for. So, I work for Fondazione Cariplo, is a banking foundation that gives grant to Italian non-profit organizations. I believe it's not that known also abroad. So, we work with the third sector, basically. And yes, something is boiling with us and we are working uh, throughout a new project, which is called uh, Copen. Copen is part of uh, Innovazione per lo Sviluppo, which literally means Innovation for Development, it is a program promoted by Fondazione Caripo and also Fondazione Compagnia di San Paolo. So what we do with this uh, project, uh, particularly with the Copen initiative, uh, we offer an open innovation opportunity to the non-profit organizations that are um, working in some African countries. Uganda is one of those. And we give them the opportunity to interact and work with African and Italian actors from the uh, innovation ecosystem. So we try to support them in solving some of the challenges that they are witnessing and facing in African countries on three topics mainly. So food and sustainable agriculture, health and well-being, and circular economy. Uh, yes, something is at the moment ongoing. We have closed the first part of the Cooper initiative about the circular economy topic. And we have just uh, selected four innovators. Two of them are from African countries indeed, and the other two are from Italy. We will work together with Italian organizations to try to uh, implement a pilot of their solution and solve uh, some challenges from indeed the circular economy. The next call will be launched soon about uh, for food and sustainable agriculture, and the process will be the same, trying to support the Italian non-profit organizations and uh, to solve some challenges that they are facing in African countries regarding this topic. Thank you, Gianluca. Thank you very much. That's uh, that's very interesting and exciting. And uh, it's a very exciting project. I think we need to build more and more of these bridges between Italy and Africa. And I would like to bring on a panel, uh, Donald DeVitt, uh, which is uh, business development, 
manager EMEA of uh, Cisco. And as I said, Cisco is a great, uh, great company that has always had a very uh, important attention to helping the others and to be inclusive as much as possible. And so, Donald, can you tell us something about Cisco and uh, the activities that you do uh, regarding innovation and innovation in Africa? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks for inviting me. Well, Cisco, uh, a global technology company um, extending from creating uh, the, the Internet, being uh, the builders of the Internet, uh, the secure Internet, uh, everything which is related to security, Collaboration, look what we're using today here, uh, WebEx, uh, to make a collaboration virtually uh, possible and it's so extensive. But it means as well that if you're a global technology company, you live from innovation. You have to be the first one in the market. And you have different ways in looking into in innovation. One is having your own research and development organization. And others is looking into startups, promoting startups, okay? Pro looking into who is making things that you do not have. And from there, in fact, my role as a business development manager, I look into um, specific uh, companies in software development that use our APIs to build solutions on our collaboration products, okay? And so, that is one. Secondly, um, education is, is very important. Um, it comes back over and over. Um, education is the step forward of a country growth, if it's a step forward of, of creating a business. And in fact, that's where I got involved personally. Cisco allows employees to do volunteering work. We have a great volunteering program. Employees, we get uh, five days a year extra holidays to do volunteering work. And the picture behind me is I just came back from Ghana. Um, I'm involved in a nonprofit organization called um, NASCO Feeding Minds. The nonprofit organization is oriented to IT education in Ghana. And uh, there, they have been building training centers, IT training centers in the northern part of Sa Saula, the northern part of Ghana. And that was great. They have these 11 centers. They get these computers, they refer it. But what was what they was missing? Was internet. Having the internet there was then that would open them to another world. And in fact, I got involved uh, with the nonprofit organization uh, a little uh, over a year. And I said, look, Let's build a bridge and go there and get internet into that part. And so we made an agreement with um, with Yaklik, uh, who is a service provider in satellite internet connectivity, together with uh, Boozy Internet. Uh, and we, I went there. I'm just back uh, two weeks ago, and we connected these eleven centers through satellite uh, connect, uh, communication to the internet. And so that's the next step. What we really want to do is so we build now education. We give them access to online education. We have the Cisco Network Academy for even more IT education. The next part we're looking into and supporting that nonprofit organization is now building a company. Uh, the company is going to call NASCO Tech. And what we want is create employment and create opportunities. I've been there and I see an incredible talent in, in Ghana. There's incredible young talent. But we have to, to create the opportunities there. Um, in fact, the founder was a refugee. And what we want to avoid is that people leave Africa for other for opportunities uh, somewhere else. No, we have to create the opportunities in Africa. Yeah. And through building the companies, that is what we can do there. And that's exactly the spirit that we share together with Cisco. And let me say again about, you know, this such a beautiful technology company that has always had this incredible spirit of, let's say, yes, being a company, but being present in this world and be responsible for, for their presence and for doing and contributing. 
uh, Lawrence, Lawrence uh, Dikusoka, uh, I'd like to hear your point of view because now, I mean, you are the protagonist of today, actually. We'd be really happy to learn uh, about uh, how your experience has gone so far. It was very unfortunate we couldn't meet you here in Italy. We really would have loved to have you here. And uh, looking back at the, at the program, uh, what did it look to you? Anything positive? What do you think that did we were we able were we able to contribute to your development of the company in some in some ways? Uh, buongiorno. I know it's late, but it's actually the night in Uganda. It's curfew time, so I will just be responding uh, quickly to your questions. Um, and many, maybe next time we'll meet at uh, the stadium in Milan. It's such an <laughs> honor to be here, and I was happy to meet with the founders of Startup Africa in in, uh, in Uganda. They came to our Gula Conservation Cafe in Entebbe, which I'll be talking about Gula Conservation coffee company as a whole and uh, I think the learnings were quite tremendous particularly when we look at uh, entering markets in Europe so we're looking at the other way of trade from Uganda to Europe not uh, uh, importing per se and uh, I think uh, this product here that I'm holding up go to conservation coffee which is available in the European Union uh, and Asia Pacific is one uh, conversation that I had with the startup uh, Africa road trip team. How do we conceptualize the scale from Uganda to, let's say, Milan? And people that want to support the mountain gorillas, uh, would they be able to, to buy gorilla conservation coffee in any place in Italy? Not only in Milano, but any place. Turin, uh, Lazio, all these major cities, uh, Roma. Etc. So that's just my introduction. I did have a question though. Uh, there's three questions that were presented or shared on email. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you like my perspective on those? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Uh, would you like to ask the question, the first one? No, or the second? you go ahead. Okay. So, so I, I was on a TED talk today. Um, and the question came about, uh, you know, what is my role um, in creating uh, innovation ecosystem? So, obviously, uh, this um, lady here, Dr. Gladys Kalema uh, Zixoka, is our CEO and founder. She's not able to take this call, but we work together in building both conservation through public health, which is an award winning. Uh, NGO that does biodiversity conservation linked to gorilla conservation coffee. And, uh, you know, we're, we're essentially trying to support conservation um, in protected areas, conservation through looking at three areas, maybe people's health. Um, also, healthcare is important, particularly now with COVID-19. Um, originally, when we started out, it was focusing on the scabies outbreak that happened in 1996 when an infant uh, died of scabies. Um, so we're cognizant about uh, disease uh, transfer. We wish to look at those ecosystems in more detail. Um, many of you may have heard that Italy in June, we lost Rafiki. Rafiki was a very important gorilla, uh, was accidentally speared um, by a poacher. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had lots of challenges with respect to uh, building the ecosystem during COVID. You know, how do you deal with transport? How do you deal with uh, payments? How do you deal with APIs? As our gentleman Donald was talking from Cisco, sharing of APIs, startups. But I think uh, overall, um, when you look at um, creating a global coffee brand, is not only about the coffee, it's actually about achieving the triple bottom line. So if you're not paying your farmers above the market price for Arabica, which I know in Italy is not as popular as Robusta, I understand that. But contextually, that it's unfortunate, you know. Uh, so now we're looking at um, what can the farmers do for themselves uh, that's slightly different than before, you know. Yep. 
Um, so if I was a farmer around the World Heritage Site, like Windy, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, how would I like to survive in the future? Would it be by going into the forest? I don't think so. Uh, would there be some kind of economy that I can build on my own? Yes, this could be an answer, not the only answer. Um, so we're trying to see if coffee can support conservation programs, but make sure that it's sourced in the right way process in the right way and marketed in the right way. You see, Gorilla Conservation Coffee. Some people call it Gorilla Coffee. No, it's Gorilla Conservation Coffee. We're achieving conservation through coffee as a tool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very good. Back, to, <laughs> back to Francesca. Francesca, so I think we will have to kind of like uh, uh, go quick uh, to the end uh, of the panel, which is uh, because we've been a bit late. So I will ask you just a final question, which is so far, what have you learned about startups, you know, given your big experience in the nonprofit space? And what specifically have you learned about uh, working with startups in Africa that somehow was surprising for you, Francesca? Yeah, I will be fast and go by, by keywords. Uh, first of all, is that uh, um, the beneficiaries, those that are having experiencing the problem, uh, has have to be part of the solution, and we are seeing it with the startups. The startups that come from Africa, from African people, and they know how to solve the problem. So solutions are there. The second is women. We have seen um, women can have can play an, an, a huge role all over the world for sure, but in, uh, in Africa especially, um, if you if you start from women and you start solving problems from from women, exactly, then uh, you really have an impact that is even bigger than what you were expecting. Um, and then the third thing is that uh, um, energy. There's a lot of young people in Africa and uh, everybody, I mean, uh, also the people have mentioned that. Uh, and this brings a lot of energy, a lot of ideas, and also the entrepreneurship rate is so high. So this is what probably surprised me more uh, in, on my job in, uh, in Africa and with startups. Uh, all that energy, we dream about it in Europe now because we are an aging population. So I think we need that energy and we need to, uh, in, to give the, 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 the means and to facilitate all that energy to come up and keep on supporting. So the last, last thing is that uh, um, social impact and profit are not enemies. They are friends. We can have development uh, creating profit. So this is something that... Uh, we need to bear in mind, and these startups are really testifying that. Thank you very much. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, Alessandro Machadri, same question to you. What, uh, I mean, so far working with this project, I mean, what's your take about, you know, what's surprising about what you've seen so far or something that we can let's learn from what we've learned so far? Thank you, Gianluca. So as Francesca, I'll try to be very quick and straight to the point. I think the biggest surprise for us was that during the Copen initiative, we found with the organizations more than 20 challenges, more or less on the three topics. And while we were writing these challenges down for all of them, we already know which are the solutions. So the solutions are actually existing. They are just out there. The role we should play and what we should do is just and we are trying to do actually to create the opportunity for these solutions to meet the people who actually need it and most of the times the solutions are just in Africa we are an Italian organization and also try to facilitate the interaction to make sure also Italian innovators can contribute but at the end of the day most of the time solutions are already there the only thing and only maybe is a bit reductive the, what we should do is just facilitate the meeting between the people, the innovator were bringing the solutions and the people who need it the most. So the people who actually, at the end of the day, will benefit from it. I think this was the biggest surprise. It's not about doing or building or inventing new solutions. It's more about making sure the solutions that are out there will meet the people who need it the most. That's, a, that's, a, that's also very sustainable as an approach to kind of things. And the same question to you, Donald. What, uh, what's your take so far about, uh, you know, building a sustainable, fair uh, future and economy for all of our children? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
again, my experience of being in Africa, I've been in, in, in several places in Africa. Uh, we as technology companies have the responsibility to build out the internet there. Um, that's the basis. I see so many um, startups and they say online doctors and they say uh, whatever. It's all based on the internet. And if the internet is not there, it's not going to help. And so I think that it's the first thing that we have to do is solve the water of the 21st century. That's the internet. And I think that's the basis thing that we have to work on. Okay. If not, it's just not going to uh, go further. Secondly, is and I stay there, there are incredible talents. I have incredible conversations with very dynamic young people. And, and I'm pleased to say that I saw in the classes around 25% of girls. Okay. And for me, that was great to see that they are really interested. Okay. Um, girls bring another perspective to IT. And we, we, we really need them. They look different into the interface. They look different in how we use things. Okay. Man, we look into bit and byte. Okay. They, 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 they think different and we need that uh, combination in the solution. But my, my biggest call out stays is that we have to create the opportunities in Africa. If we spend the amount of millions we use to accommodate these immigrants that come into Europe, the same amount of millions to build the opportunities there, these people would not come to Europe for other opportunities. And that is what we have to look and we have to sh shift that mindset and say, we have to create the opportunities in the countries and that will bring back that economy. That's a, that's a challenging task, but we definitely have to help Africa developing. It's also for our own good as a planet. Lawrence, the last word to you. Uh, just uh, was curious about some impressions about these Italians <laughs> coming to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> coming to Africa. What's your take so far on these Italians? Look, you know, we, we like football a lot. You know, Italians like football. We also eat occasionally pasta, you know, especially we like, pizza. We like coffee as well. Uh, but you like robusta, it's the wrong kind. It's there is a new generation good. now that love, they love the real coffee, not the robusta. They, if you go now, there are uh, three shops for coffee and the people that really know about coffee, they will know which one to take, which is yours. Bring them to me, bring them to me, please. Bring them to me. Absolutely. Okay, no, so, what question, uh, what should I say as a summary? Look, um, I agree that it's important to promote uh, uh, women in science, including uh, Dr. Gladys, uh, Uganda's first wildlife veterinarian in the whole country, wildlife for animals. I also agree with our um, panelist, uh, Donald from Cisco. This is a photo of an internet center that we built in Windy in 2005. 2005 using VSAT and solar, uh, a small grant from the Uganda Communication Commission. Now, first time to bring internet to Bwindi was, in, was incredible because it meant the tourists who didn't have GSM could come to a cafe and uh, basically uh, send one simple message home to their safe, they're fine, and possibly, possibly just upload, you know, one photo at the time because we were using very slow uh, VSAT connectivity. So these people have now graduated and they're the very people that Donald is talking about, the innovators of the future that can also benefit Africa, that can also benefit Europe and the rest of the world. So I think uh, these two points resonate with me very well in this panel discussion. Um, I also want to uh, encourage our colleague who spoke about fish farmers because you know, farming is, is a mainstay. We're still mostly an agrarian economy, you know. So when there's innovations in farming, be it fish farming or any other type of farming, I think it's good. It's good for domestic uh, consumption. It's good for potential uh, export. Uh, so these are the two things that I'd like to mention. Um, I've got nothing more to say, but 
you know, it was a pleasure to meet with the team from Italy and also that a number of projects were identified and highlighted, you know, um, pro program projects dealing with the women in Africa. That was a very good one. Of course, us at Jukola Conservation Coffee, the Boda Boda of Zambo was an excellent project and it has a lot more potential because of the sunlight that exists. Um, and Swipe to Pay in the payment space is also a very good example of the use of APIs, as mentioned by Donald. Um, the only final thing I'd like to say is a call to action, and that is there's, there's about a thousand mountain gorillas left in the world, okay? Every single day, people come and see them as visitors globally. Is there a way to create a fund uh, and a fund that will continue for gorilla conservation? This is my call to action. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, Hans, that's, a, that's an interesting point. I guess probably there are definitely a certain organization that uh, should take care of these kind of things. And uh, we definitely, Roberta Coco probably is the highest official in the, in the room that can help us to, to, to figure that out. We're also mm -hmm. working with some potential support for the Italian government. So who knows? Mm -hmm. So we're wrapping up with this panel. And I'd like, you, I'd like to thank you, all the panelists, uh, for participating, for all of you to be here. Uh, to, to say how the Startup Africa project is uh, something that we are really keen on. Um, Laura, just mute yourself, sorry, because there is a big loop. Uh, thank you. And uh, no, <laughs> that's okay. So uh, that's that's all for the panel. I just wanted to wrap up. Uh, I just wish that we can move, do more and 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 more with Africa. And I think that we have uh, a lot to gain as Italians, as Italy, a lot to learn, a lot to gain. And uh, first of all, the biggest gain is to to see how beautiful Africa is and how different it is from the media that we see and. Uh, and uh, how, how much uh, youth, energy, opportunity, and uh, in the old Europe, we need this kind of feeling. So thank you very much for giving us that feeling. So thank you very much for participating in the panel. Back to Francesco. Gianluca, thanks again for, um, for um, facilitating this panel. And also thanks a lot to all the amazing uh, distinguished guests, Donald, Francesca, Lorenz, and Alessandro, who through their perspective pictured um, a different Africa. Um, the thing is that we are all human and we as human, we are afraid of the things that we, are, we don't know. So the goal of these events and the goal of our uh, project is also to shed a light on Africa and on entrepreneurship, the, poten the high potential that entrepreneurship in Africa could have, and how can we act towards this direction? Uh, as Donald uh, previously said, we have to create opportunities in Africa, and we are going to talk about this uh, at, uh, with Usman, who was the founder of uh, NASCO Feeding Mind, in during our podcast will be available on the um, listening platforms such as Spotify and all the others. You can look up and start uh, listening our podcast from tomorrow. The podcast is called, of course, Startup Africa Talks. You can also follow us, follow us on our social media uh, channels. And Last, uh, but not least, thanks again for all of you who took part in this event, uh, all our sponsor who uh, made this possible. And for the, for the next year, we need your help. We need volunteers, we need sponsors, we need partners, we need new ideas, we need fresh angles and perspectives. So don't be shy, connect with us and we will be more than happy to use your time, your um, availability in order to make a greater good, in order to make great impact with uh, local entrepreneurs. Thanks again to everyone who watched this event up until the end. And I give you uh, appointment to our social media handles, as I said, 
and to the Startup Africa Talks podcast. Thanks.